Hey guys, hope everybody's doing good. Welcome back to another edition of Intuitive Angling here where you, sometimes you're gonna learn some hardcore hogging tips, sometimes you're gonna get your feelings hurt, sometimes I'm gonna say something that makes you think, uh, makes you uh, maybe agree with it, maybe you don't, you just never know where you're gonna get here. So today I wanna follow up on, on a video I did this morning. Um, I was talking about you know some of the uh, sort of the myths about the uh, Bass Pro Tour and the Bassmaster Elite Series in terms of perception. And I got a lot of comments on that video and I want to sort of follow it up with actually the more important part, in my opinion, why I don't think that professional bass fishing is ever going to be perceived as a true professional sport, which is a tragedy. And there's reasons for that. There, it could have been prevented. And I sort of want to sort of give you guys my thoughts on that because I've sort of been in the trenches, you know, many, many years with it. I've been involved in uh, some potential boycotts of the tournaments years ago. I've, uh, I've got a lot of experience with this. So anyway, here's the deal guys with that. Um, I, I get a lot of third party feedback from people that don't know much about fishing that when I tell them I'm a professional bass fisherman, they have questions like they've never heard of it or you know, they, they are sort of amazed that it's even a sport, let alone a professional sport. So the public has a lot of misconceptions with that. And what we've had now is like, and I'm gonna go back in time a little bit, but I'm gonna start with what we have right now. Right we have right now is that there is no definition of what a professional angler is. There's literally thousands of people that call themselves professional anglers. You go on social media profiles, people say they're pro anglers all the time. Nobody knows what a pro angler is. Here's what's happened. Here's the evolution that has caused us to get to the point where the entities in power in the sport have sort of undermined the public perception of professional bass fishing through their actions. This is sort of what's happened. You know, for for so many years, you know, Bassmaster, the Bassmaster Tournament Trail was the definitive professional bass fishing circuit. Now there were some some West Coast stuff, and there were some AAA type stuff, but without a doubt, in the mind of everybody that followed this genre of fishing, the Bass Angler Sportsman Society was was profesh the professional bass fishing circuit. And for up until really the FLW Tour came along in 1996, um, you were defined as a professional bass fish bass angler only by if you fished the Bassmaster Tournament Trail because that, you know, they had a couple different circuits. They had, you know, they had the Bassmaster Invitationals, which are sort of like the Opens now. And then they had the Bassmaster Top 100s, Top 150s in the 80s and 90s. Um, and that was the professional circuit. If you were in the Bassmaster Top 100s, you could, you could call yourself a professional angler. What happened is with the advent of the FLW Tour, in two competitive circuits, you had, you know, you had a, a fracture of, of, of what people considered as a professional angler. The FLW Tour basically could not be ignored because they threw so much money into the sport. They threw more money into the sport than Bassmaster was paying out. So from that standpoint, everybody got this sort of this confusion. It's like, okay, what is the true pro circuit here? Is the Bassmaster circuit professional fishing or CFLW2 or professional fishing. And that's where it all began today. And now we've just spiraled out of control on the thing because there's so many circuits. But here's the reason guys that bass fishing, professional bass fishing in my opinion, will never be considered a legitimate professional sport because you look at every sporting genre out there that has the credibility and maintained um, its image and tradition over the course of decades and decades, like Major League Baseball, the, the, the NFL, the PGA, Professional Golfers Association, the Professional Bowlers Tour. There is no doubt in your mind, if you say I'm a professional basketball player, then you're in the NBA. If you say you're a professional baseball player, you're in the major league, uh, in the major leagues. Um, if you say you're a professional bowler, you're in the PBA. If you're a professional golfer, you're in the PGA. If somebody asks you, are you a professional bass angler? Um, there, nobody knows what that is, literally, because there's guys call themselves professional anglers that fish the Bassmaster Elites, the, the, the Bass Pro Tour, the Tackle Warehouse Tour, the Bassmaster Opens. 
It just, the, the NPFLs, I mean, it just goes on and on and on. And as a result, there is no definition of what is a professional angler. The only definition that you have as a professional angler is if you fish for money and you could be considered a professional angler, which tens of thousands of people do. So in my opinion, this, this has really, really degraded the potential that the sport had to get into the mainstream, to, to, into the mainstream consciousness, simply by, this, by the segmentation of it. And a lot of this has to do with the fact that um, early on, back in the, uh, the early 90s, that there was a push that made, there, there was a push that was made by the anglers to gain control of their own destiny. We wanted to form a union and we, we got together at some early Bassmasters Classics, told Bassmaster and Ray Scott that if we couldn't have these demands met and have some type of an organized union where we have a voice in it, that we weren't gonna fish the tournaments. And their response coming back was that, well, it's fine if you guys don't wanna fish the tournaments, we'll find 35 guys that do. That was their actual response to it. So when you're dealing with something like that, um, the anglers in a large extent, unless they're willing to put their careers on the line, are powerless to do anything. So as a result, what has happened is the, I guess you can call it free market capitalism or whatever, it allowed all of these sub turn these sub circuits to pop up over the course of the year. You know, the bigger regional events, you know, FLW stuff, you know, now it's the MLF stuff, all the stuff has popped up and as a result, um, nobody knows what the heck a professional fisherman, a professional bass angler is anymore. And we probably are never going to know. I mean, that's, that's the sad thing about it. You know, the only, the, here's the only way that it would, could have really, you know, come about is that like early in the days before FLW, if the anglers could have got together and formed some type of a union where they were in control of their destiny of the tournament. And I don't know if they could have partnered with Bassmaster or whatever, probably that wouldn't work. They would have probably had to buy it out at some point. But unless the anglers could have executed that back in the early 90s and basically taken over control of their destiny and, and had some had some type of a, uh, I don't know, maybe the buyout of Bass where Bass, the Bass Angler Sportsman Society retained its identity, but it was owned by a league, by the anglers sort of like a, you know, the PGA is that type of stuff. That's, that's what would have been the ideal scenario because at that point, that particular entity could have dictated, you know, what, what, what dict or what was considered a professional angler. You had to get a card. You had to get a card just like you have to fit to compete in the PGA to complete in their events. You have to earn your professional anglers card and nobody else can be considered a professional angler with that. And in doing so, um, like I said, I think that elevates the sport, you know, to a level that we're just never going to get here right now. So is it a good thing or a bad thing, you know, looking at this? I, I guess there's a couple different ways to look at it. I mean, from a pure standpoint, if you, if you want to put professional bass angling on the same level as baseball and football and golf and that type of stuff, you can't do it the way that we are right now. So unless that is your motivation. Unless you want to see professional angling at that level of, as other sports, um, we can't have that under this current format. But the problem that we have right now is you've got so many vested interests pulling the sport in so many different directions, and you have a base of anglers that basically have no power to do anything. Um, that creates a scenario where I don't see anything changing moving forward. I really don't. I don't, I don't. I think that we're going to maintain this segmentation and literally thousands of people are going to call themselves professional anglers. There's no clear cut, a definitive answer, you know, who sets the, the bar as a professional angler. You know, obviously right now, Bassmaster still has, Bassmaster has the edge on everybody else simply because of the tradition of the Bassmaster Classic. If the bat, that's the reason that the Bass Pro Tour and the MLF just hasn't been able to gain any traction is because they don't have that marquee event. I talked to so many people, they've got so many things, they, they got so many elements of that Bass Pro Tour that nobody can figure out what's going on over there. I, I hear that constantly from like my, uh, uh, you know, on the water clients and stuff like that. They go, I can't figure it out what they're doing over there. It's just confusing as heck. So 
in a lot of people's mind, Bassmaster still is the true professional circuit, but you can't call them the true professional circuit because there's all these other ones that, can, that call themselves professional circuits as well. So it's sort of a mess. It's sort of a mess that the, the industry has created itself. And I think a lot of it is, uh, it, it was preventable, but at the same time, it, people just did not have the influence and the motivation to do that. I remember sitting in that meeting where we were at the Bassmaster Classic. I believe it was, God, I can't even remember which one. It was back in the early 90s, but we were in a room together, the, the entire field of the Bassmaster Classic the day before the tournament. And people were saying, okay, you guys willing to do this? You guys willing not to fish the classic? And we couldn't get a unanimous agreement. People, there are a lot of guys said, I can't do that. I, I'm going to lose a sponsor if I don't fish the classic. So as a result, we had to fold and just continue on with the status quo. And we never took it to the next level. So there was a pivotal point years ago where that could have changed and it never did. Um, another thing about it is I don't, I don't think that you can just throw money at it and create this too, because there's people out there that have the money to do that. But the problem is they, there's always some self-serving special interest with nobody. There's, there hasn't been an individual emerge that has the financial resources and zero ego and zero motivation other than seeing the sport get to reach its full potential. There's no other angle. There's no person that has emerged in that position yet. There's still, you know, profit margins, profit motives still rule. And uh, that's the sad thing about it. So for somebody like myself and a lot of guys that have been doing this for a long time, it's sort of frustrating because I, early on, I had this, this, um, sort of this, uh, ideal image that professional angling should be on par with other sports and I didn't understand why it was why it wasn't because it was such an awesome sport and such a, a complex difficult sport to excel in and as, a, as, a, as it turned out as I watched the industry unfold uh, in different segments of it I just realized that money is just such a big part of it man it's just like money and greed and control and power um, manipulated so much of what could have been better. So I just wanted to throw that out there, guys. I, you know, from my standpoint, um, I just, you know, we, we just need to stop trying to compare ourselves and call this sport a professional sport on the, on the same level as other sports. Not that it couldn't be there, not that it doesn't deserve to be there because it does. It definitely deserves to be there. But the problem is is we've undermined our own ability to put it there through, like I said, through outside interest on there. So I just wanted to throw that out there. And, you know, after tomorrow's morning's video, let me, you guys, let me know what you guys think. I'd be curious on that. Um, a lot of you guys out there fish smaller tournaments. Some of you guys don't fish tournaments at all. What's your perception of it? I mean, do you think that it's ever going to get there? I mean, do you think that it's okay where it's at? I mean, are you frustrated that it's not considered on the same level as pro football or something like that. I'd be curious to hear. So just a few thoughts, guys. Thanks for tuning in. We'll check later.